I've worked with the legislature of the other party um, for the last nearly six years now. And we've had some significant accomplishments along with significant disagreements. You need to learn how to do that. I think I'm combat ready uh, for Washington, D.C. And you need to be in order to know how to work with people, how to bring people together. I've done that in New Jersey in a way that led to me getting 61 percent of the vote for re-election. Um, the fact is that people know I know how to bring folks together and how to fight when I need to. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome uh, back. John Zogby, pollster, Zogby Poll, CEO of, of Zogby Analytics is with us. Hey, John, welcome. Hey, Steve, how are you? I'm fine. You know, it was just, uh, I think, a week ago or maybe two uh, where uh, on Face the Nation, uh, Christie sat down and uh, said, uh, when asked if he's going to run, he said, you know, everything is checked off. Now the only remaining thing is I, I have to see if it's in my heart. I have to look and see if it's in my heart. Now, that answer was full of baloney, but the fact that he chose to go with it, how after all these many, many, many years of prepping to run for the presidency, can you actually sit there uh, two weeks before you go to actually announce and say, I don't know if it's in my heart? If he didn't know it was in his heart two weeks ago, I don't want him running as president. Well, <coughs> he obviously knew that it was in his heart. Uh, the thing is that he has to nail down all the logistics and the right time. And the right time means, you know, to pick a day when when no one else is is announcing <laughs> There's a lot of announcements. Yeah, that well, that's absolutely true. All right. How is he going to what kind of splash or impact is he going to make when he announces? Well, you, you know what? He's a player in all this. There is not a likely one, but there is a victory scenario for him. A bunch of things have to happen. Not only does he have to be good out there on the stump himself and represent that moderate to conservative part of the party, which, you know, most often gets the GOP nomination. But things have to also play his way. Bush, the, another moderate conservative, has to fail. Scott Walker, another governor with a more conservative governance model like Chris Christie, has to fail. Those things have to play out simultaneously to, to Chris Christie being good on the stump. Uh, not a likely victory scenario for him, but it is possible. And his style, uh, which he attributes to the fact that he had uh, one parent was uh, Irish and one parent was Italian, and that's the excuse he gives for yelling at people all the time. I mean, how much of that could he get away with before people start to get turned off? Hey, a lot of us yell at people a lot of times. <laughs> That's a big constituency for him right there. Now, I, I think he could play well in Iowa, to tell you the truth. And I know that he potentially does well in New Hampshire. But I'll tell you, I don't think he can follow the John McCain uh, uh, strategy of 2008. He's got to score points in Iowa. He just can't come out of nowhere and, and uh, ignore Iowa or do poorly in Iowa and expect to do well uh, in, in New Hampshire. All right, Bobby Jindal announced uh, last week. Um, what's your take on him? I don't think we have to spend too much time on it. He, he just has not carved out for himself a, a credible position. Uh, there are layers upon layers of governors, layers upon layers of, um, of social conservatives. Um, he is an Indian American. as. You may know already, Indian Americans generally vote Democrat in general elections. He could potentially pick off, you know, some of that as uh, as as different. Uh, hey, um, a young, skinny um, guy with a dark complexion. You know, some people would have written that off a few years ago. <laughs> but I'm I'm uh, I'm going to write that one off. You're going to write that one off. Um, all right. And um, what about Donald Trump? Are you surprised he's doing so well in the New Hampshire polls and? You know, today he got some maybe more good news for him. NBC dumped him, although he said he dumped NBC. I mean, uh, are these kinds of battles good for him? No, no, not at all. I, you know, let me be very honest with you. This is a travesty. You don't make an announcement to run for president of the United States like this. And you also don't go out of your way to enrage large groups of people. Look, you know, 8, 10, 12 million viewers that's good. But you need 60, 70 million votes to win the presidency. And then after that, you have to claim to represent 325, 330 million people. This is not the way to, to run a campaign. But apparently it is the way that Donald Trump does, and he will fizzle. Could he win New Hampshire? No. 
No. No. He'll he'll uh, uh, he'll do well in the early polls in New Hampshire, but New Hampshire voters get pretty serious uh, when it when it comes down to it. And um, uh, uh, you know, I have him in a distant fourth place right now in a poll that I'm going to have coming out uh, on Thursday. Okay. Well, I appreciate your honesty and your analysis, John, as always, and we'll speak to you soon. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Steve. My pleasure. John Zogby, ladies and gentlemen. All right. When we come back, professor of law at Cornell Law School, William Jacobson will join us. And I promise you, you're going to want to listen to this conversation, so don't you go away. <laughs> 